Shalom and welcome to our 22nd annual Feast of Unleavened Bread. This is part 38 of Preparing for Rulership. The Old Testament is our true history, world's best kept secret. Written by our black Hebrew Israelite forefathers, the prophets. Give me Daniel 244 and let's look at it. It will never be destroyed this time. Read. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven, Yahweh, set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Now you know that they said the Old Testament was finished and completed. But no kingdom of Yahweh has ever been set up yet. But this book says that it shall be done. Therefore, it is to be done. Daniel is not complete until it is done. And Yahweh raised me up to set this kingdom up, which shall never be destroyed. Read on. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Oh, other people can do this job. It will not be left up to another nation to bring this about. It must be done through the nation of Israel, the tribe of Judah. And the Bible says one born from among the tribe of Judah shall get this job done. Read on. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. Now, Yahweh is setting up a kingdom that is going to break all the other kingdoms up. That is my job. I am born to break all kingdoms up. I know that sounds like an impossible task, but Yahweh does all things that seem impossible. If the white scientists try to make the sun, they'll say it's impossible. Yet we see evidence that it's there, so it was not impossible. You look at the moon, the white man say it would be impossible for him to make a moon, but the moon is there. So it is possible. The white man cannot make the stars. He will tell you to make a star, it is impossible. But the stars are there. Yes, sir. Thus possible. Yes, sir. The maker, Yahweh. Yes, sir. The white man says to make air is impossible, but yet we breathe air. Yes, sir. Thus it is possible. The maker, Yahweh. The water we drink, you ask white, can you make water? He said, well, I can take some gas and, and heat it up and cause the oxygen to, you know, uh, distill and it'll distill. But can you make the gas? No, that's impossible. But yet the gas is here. Thus possible. The maker, Yahweh. The food we eat, Whitey, can you make seeds and trees and grass grow? He said, no, I can mess them up for you. I can poison them up for you. I can graft some stuff, you know, take some that's already been made and graft it onto another and mess with it, and it won't be as good as the original. I can do all that for you. But Whitey, can you make one? That's impossible. Yet it exists. Thus it's possible. The maker? Yahweh. So what seems impos impossible to Whitey, Yahweh has already done. David? Can you kill Goliath? That's impossible. All the men of the kingdom of Israel said that's impossible. Goliath is too much of a giant for us. No one can fight him and win. And Goliath taunted them. Oh, you cowards of Israel, where's your brave men? Come and fight me, and whoever is the winner is the master of all. And all of Israel was shaking and trembling. Here comes one little, small, tiny boy, David. Say, so what's wrong with you? 
Why are you afraid to fight Goliath? I'm not afraid of him. Even King Saul said, well, I'm too old to go out there and fight. <laughs> I'll tell you what you do. You think you want to fight. Either way you go, we're in slavery. So, But here's my armor. He's, David said, I don't need it. Son, you're crazy. You need some protection to fight Goliath. The biggest and the baddest giant that has ever lived. David said, I know what you don't know. I know somebody that you have forgotten about. The man I know, his name is Yahweh, so I don't need you all to protect me. I'll go fight Goliath by myself. Don't need your shield and your sword. Say, Yahweh will give me a sword. So he went out and he t on his way to Goliath, Goliath was laughing. Ah, oh, who is that little kid? He doesn't even have a, a sword. He doesn't even have a shield. You, you're sending children out to fight a man, a giant such as America? You're sending a kid to fight a giant, America? He's a little boy. Where'd that boy come from? That boy doesn't even have an army. That boy doesn't even have a shield. I know that boy's parents. I know where that boy's from. I'm traced that boy now. What's that boy doing talking to big old Goliath America like this? Talking about he's going to destroy America and consume all the white kings. What is he? Oh, ha, ha, ha. Y'all got another little boy want to come fight me. Then David told Goliath, he said, guess what? This day I'm going to kill you. And I'm going to take your own weapons, your own sword, and cut your head off with it told him to his face, like I tell America to her face. Our great, good, and terrible black God, Yahweh, is here to destroy you, and he raised me up in the midst of you to gather my people together and bring destruction on you. Go tell him, Tom. Tell him there's a little boy down here in Miami that said he's going to destroy all the white world. The whole entire kingdoms of the white world, I am going to bring them totally to destruction. I'm born to do it, and nothing you can do about it. <laughs> David walked out with a little slingshot. Picked up one slick rock of truth. Took the truth and flipped it around three times and turned it loose, and it hit Pharaoh right in the center of his head, and he fell out dead. The truth will slay the white man. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. See, what it is, we've been following the beast and didn't know it. But it says, Yahweh said that this kingdom will break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms on earth. And it shall last, how long? Forever. Now, uh, Yahweh's not a man that he should lie. So let's say it's Whitey, the beast. Whitey is in trouble. See, the, what it is, we have black nations on the earth. Africa is black. And they sit there and watch those few crackers in their country rule. And the masses of blacks are scared. Oh, don't tell me it's not fear. It's fear running in your heart. It's nothing but fear. You are afraid some of the other devils from some of the other islands and places will come to help their white brothers and jump on you so you won't jump on the ones back. Fear in your heart. It's not just fear in the black man's heart in America. It's fear in the black man's heart all over the planet Earth. Those few that, that conquer some of their fear, white it starts to running, catching planes, getting out. And the, the embassies start closing down. White it gets on the run. Then he pretends, well, well we're going to give you freedom. There's no way in the hell white it can give me freedom. I'm already free. I'm born free. When I came out the womb, I was free. Before I entered the womb, I was free. I've always been free. And I came up with no fear. 
and I have no fear. And I know he's a beast. I know he's a devil. I know he's an animal. I know he's the most vicious murderer that has ever been on the planet Earth. There's never been a murderer like Whitey. Yes, John 8, 44 says he is, they are the children of the devil. Yes, Their father was the devil. John 8, 44, let's turn. I know, who I'm, I know who my enemy is. I know who I'm fighting. Yes, sir. And the truth I have will destroy Whitey in every sense of the word. And when our people have fear in the heart of the white man in the various countries, they sell out. They don't see how they can have victory over Whitey. So they sell out for 30 pieces of silver. They tie them right out. Praise Yahweh. They also know that Whitey will kill their leaders, like Lumumba and, and others who stand up that really believe in a united black Africa and a united black man on the planet Earth. They kill them out. But they won't kill out this one. I'm right here in the middle of this devil. Tell the world he's the devil. Told him and wrote to the president and told him he was the devil. I told the whole U.S. government they are the devil. I told all the governors and all the mayors of America. I sent them a special book. And, and, and it said on the headline, let my people go. And I told them inside, you are the devil. The Bible describes you as the devil. And all of you devils that contend with me over the mental freedom of my people, my father Yahweh is going to whip on your country and whip on you, and you'll be glad to let us go when my daddy gets through with you. Oh, that's in black and white. See, it's not going away nowhere. What I wrote won't disappear. And they act like I haven't said a word. But it was 85 degrees here today and snowing in the north. Several feet of snow down in the north. Yahweh is after this devil. Through earthquakes. Tornadoes. Snow and flood and rain. Every day, Yahweh is after this devil. Yes, sir. And he is being victorious. Yes, and I talk bad oh, yeah. because my daddy is bad. Yes, oh, I don't even compromise. No compromise. I'm here announcing the end, the judgment of Whitey yes, and all that love Whitey. Yes, it is because of me that the black people of the earth are going to gain strength. Yes, it's because of my strength in Yahweh that the black nations are going to get strength. Yes, They're going to have to get strength because to see me stand up and deal with this devil means they say, well, shoot, if that boy over there can do it, maybe we can drive the devil out of our country. That little man over there all by himself, he doesn't have any weapons and he's winning against the devil. Oh, I'm winning against the devil. He said, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Yeah. So if I'm not anointed, then I'm in trouble. Yeah. Oh, but if I'm anointed, he's in trouble. Yeah. I'm here telling you he's in trouble. Yeah. One of us is in trouble. Both of us can't win. I'm a winner. I was born to be a winner. Yeah. Yahweh is the winner. Yeah. I'm here representing Yahweh. I come in his name. And he is a man of war. He never lost a war. So I'm a warrior. But first, let me tell you about this devil, John 8, 44. Read about the skunk of the planet Earth. John 8, 44. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. That's the devil. I mean, you just come on TV and just tell a lie. How do you know why they would just lie? He'll make a treaty and break it. Ask the Indians. Well, ask the Indians. You don't think why they'll make a treaty and break it? Ask the Indians. He made a treaty with his southern neighbors. But when his white woman, Margaret Thatcher, wanted to take that ice rock 
in the Falkland Island. It was a rock, an ice rock. America joined with their white folks. Forget the treaty with the Southern American states. Hey, I have to go with white. See, he exposed himself, didn't he? And then black folk turn right around and bow down and kiss white his feet. It's time out for that, Tom. Time to quit timing. Yes, Yahweh is God. Yes, there is no God beside Yahweh. They are of their father, the devil, white people. Just know it, that's all. You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free from lies. Please turn to side two. How many believe we're supposed to be like God? Give me Matthew 5, 48, and let's see. Matthew 5, 48. Write all these scriptures down now so you can go home and study them by yourself. Read. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Yahweh is perfect. We're supposed to be perfect like him. And Yahweh is a man of war. So if we're supposed to be like him, what kind of men are we supposed to be? Men of war. Ah. The more we learn about Yahweh, the more we learn about how we're supposed to be. The son in Matthew 5, 40 said, be like Yahweh. Be perfect like your father in heaven is perfect. That's what he said do. How many believe we can be perfect if he told us to be perfect? We can be perfect. That's why he told us, be perfect. He said, don't bow down, don't bow down to no false gods. Be perfect like Yahweh. Yahweh is a man of war. Well, let's find out how Yahweh feels about his enemies. Psalms 139, 22. Give me Psalms 139.22. All right. Read. I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. He said he hates how? Then why you want to run around loving your enemy except you've been brainwashed? See, it's the enemy and his false white Christianity that taught you those lies about love your enemy because the same white folk don't love their enemy. They drop bombs on their enemies. It was white Christians dropped the bomb on Japan. Huh? They were singing, Onward Christian soldier marching into a... You, really? you want to forget, don't you? <laughs> oh, but what kind of soldier? Christian soldiers. Huh? You want to forget, don't you? See, ain't no turn the other cheek. Oh, but in the army, it's Christian chaplains. You ever heard of those? Hmm? They're not in that teaching turn the other cheek to the soldiers now. It's rough to get this truth like this, but it's the truth anyway. <laughs> Let's go back to 1 Kings 9. Five through now. Let the word of Yahweh talk to your heart. Read. Then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever. Only if we know the whole truth. Read. As I promised to David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. All right, read on. But if ye shall at all turn from following me, ye or your children. Notice, here's a warning. If you or your children turn back from following me. Some of us say, well, maybe this is just not for me. You come and you hear and you learn about Yahweh and you're always threatening to leave. Always threatening to go back. Well, it's writing about you here. Don't you see the word it's talking? If you or your children turn back from following me, I think I'll turn back. Maybe this is not for me. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'll turn around. You better read the word for you who think you'll turn back. Read that part again, if ye are your children. But if ye shall at all turn from following me, ye 
or your children and will not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have set before you but go and serve other gods and worship them what will, you, what will happen when you get through serving these old white gods these old white JC's and things huh and other religions all these other old religions what do you say he will do then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them and this house which I have hallowed for my name will I cast out of my sight have we been cut off yes, sir. have we been cast out yes, sir. God is living on islands and things yes, sir. out in the middle of the water <laughs> and Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people verse 7 said that we would be a proverb and a byword among all people that means called colored niggers and all kind of names verse 8 read and at this house which is high every one that passeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss and they shall say why have the Lord Yahweh done thus unto this land and to this house why has Yahweh done this to this people in America to the black man why read on and see why and they shall answer because they forsook the Lord Yahweh their God because we forsook the Lord our God Yahweh that's why that's the whole answer read on who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt and have taken hold upon other gods and have worshipped them and served them therefore have the Lord Yahweh brought upon them all this evil he brought upon us all this evil because we turned our back on him okay let's take a look at Deuteronomy 28 we the Hebrew Israelites are blessed who keep his law we are cursed when we break his law Deuteronomy 28 1 read and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord Yahweh thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord Yahweh thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord Yahweh thy God blessed shalt thou be in the city and blessed shalt thou be in the field blessed shall be the fruit of thy body what is the fruit of our body children. our children be done. and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle the increase of thine kind and the flocks of thy sheep some of our people in different parts of the world individually have sheep and cattle and things but as a nation strictly for the benefit of us as a nation independent of white people no for ourselves freely to trade and take care of each other no but these blessings will overtake us if we obey the law all of the commandments of Yahweh read on blessed shall be thy basket and thy store blessed shall thy be when thy comest in and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out the Hebrew Israelites are supposed to be in the business of selling not a whole lot of buying but a whole lot of selling we're supposed to do as little buying as possible. We're supposed to manufacture and sell. 
That's why you have to have a country. See, we are the original business people of the earth. Hebrew is, that's why oh, I have a whole thing. I don't, I don't want to bore you tonight. But I've been trying to get to some knowledge I want to give to you tonight. See, the reasons all the nations hated us, the Hebrew Israelites, is because we were always the richest people on the planet Earth. We're responsible for all of the trade routes of the East. It's not the Arabs or the Oriental or those people who originated the trade routes. We are. We are the original merchants. We are the original craftsmen. We are the original designers. We are the original architects. We are the genius of the earth. We are born with divine intelligence, superior power of mind. We are the gods of the earth. Have you not heard that you are gods? Sounds what? Always sell more than you buy. That'll make you what? Rich. Rich. That's why we must have our own country. Don't give me no rock out in the middle of the ocean, man. I don't grow nothing on no volcano. <laughs> no. Uh -uh. I want my home. I want my home. That's where I'm going. I'm not going nowhere but home. See, we grew our own food. The Bible tells us we had our own vineyard. The first thing that the virtuous woman does in Proverbs 31, she plants a vineyard, a vine yard. What grows on the vine? Grapes. And what do we do with the grapes? Make wine for all the winos of the world and sell it to them. We made all the wine the world could drink. Huh? We export it. Not for food. We grew everything. We, need. we don't play that game. See, Whitey has divided up the black nations. Let me tell you a little bit tonight. Whitey has divided up the black nations. What he's done, he'll take South America, Venezuela, and say, now what I want you to do is you become the banana republic. Then he'll go over to a country in Africa. He'll say, I want you to grow coffee. Or Jamaica, you grow coffee. And we'll import all the coffee you make. So you invest all, you grow everything in your country you can through the trade deal in coffees. Instead of feeding yourself and being self-sufficient, you grow everything you can in coffee. Then he tells another country, you grow cotton. Then he tells, what's this one down in South America that you grow cattle? Brazil. You grow cattle. And see, now what we'll do, see, we'll have, by, by your climate, we can have, because your climate is different from mine, uh, your climate is suited to grow certain things all year long. So all year long, 12 months out the year, we can have all the fresh fruits and all the fresh vegetables and all these things and we'll buy from you and we'll have what you call the international trade agreements and balance of payments and all this kind of stuff. So the black countries say, yeah, yeah. Okay, Whitey, you running the world. It's a pretty smart idea. Yeah, so you can get stupid rich and the game is undercut. See, you, you export all you can and buy less, see. And then your country will have more money. Well, why they got a trick for you, see? It's called, we don't need coffee this year. <laughs> <laughs> hey, eat it. Eat your coffee. <laughs> hey, I mean, that's a cold shot. Man, I need to import some food. Yeah, that's tough. We don't need coffee. <laughs> you say, well, wait a minute, man. I mean, it's going to ride in our field. I say, well, I'll, I'll take it for a penny a pound. A penny a pound? You t you <laughs> it cost me a quarter to grow it. <laughs> well, take it or leave it. You know, the best I can do is two cents, since you're crying so hard. Now, you got a deficit. You made no money on your whole crop. Makes you, see, they create a whole bunch of lies internationally among the white folk. Claim there's a crisis here, and a crisis there, and a crisis here. And so all the black countries are in the trick. So they end up giving up the coffee for nothing. Then you fool around and grow coffee. He said it'll be better next year. So you grow more coffee next year. When you come to market next year, he said, well, we didn't sell all the coffee you sold this last year. <laughs> huh? And to keep you from having no faith, the third year he'll buy some coffee from you. So that you see, you're so quick to forget that you'll plant coffee all over again. In the meantime, the only one eating good is the army of the country, the elite. 
only the elite of the country is eating well and have what they want because they're the ones who divvy that money that comes in. So then the little country turns around and says, well, we can't make it off the amount of money we made off the coffee that you paid us. We still need food. So then America said, well, good. White nations said, well, we have the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. Tell you what we do. We'll loan you. And we'll give you some aid because we like you. See? Now, when you get this aid, it's tied with a string called you must buy a plane. Or, you must spend it on a tank. You say, well, we're not going to war with nobody. He said, oh, you're not? So he go over to your neighbor and, and give him some guns to attack your barter. You say, hey, man. <laughs> They're attacking. He said, well, I saw you say you some weapons. So then you spend all your wealth buying some guns that he sick your brother on you for. <laughs> huh? Now he's selling guns to both of you. And then he gets your coffee for nothing. So you end up owing him a few billion dollars. Now you're in debt. And you say, well, it's a legitimate debt. You borrowed the money. What are you going to do? Now your interest payments is more than your national income. <laughs> huh? So you become a, a 1983 slave, that's all. You worked all your life trying to get out of debt, and it's an old plantation trick. I wish I had time to teach you about all the tricks of the devil. These are the things they don't write about in the New York Times. These are the things you don't read about at the 6 o'clock news and the 11 o'clock news and on Nightline. You don't read about this, but it's happening to our black countries around the world. This concludes part 38 of Preparing for Rulership.